Howdy y'all, my name is Price and I'm coming at you with some more Slime Rancher! And this is going to be a brand new series that we're starting. It's one that I've wanted to make for quite some time and I feel like finally we have a good time to really try and do this. And this is going to be Slime Rancher for beginners. Version 1.01c is out. It should now be out on Xbox or very soon as well. And I think this is a great point to make a series where I'm going to focus on new Slime Rancher players. I'm going to treat this like we're trying to teach people who have never played the game before, all the little tricks and neat things, the little areas where things are hidden, all of the stuff that you're going to want to know as a new Slime Rancher player to kind of get up and running. Now, I haven't written down any major talking points that I want to cover. I mostly want to just play this out and talk about things as I see them and try and think from my perspective, what it was like when I first played the game and what I needed to know going forward. Now, if you have questions on this series, please, please, please leave them below. There's no such thing as a dumb question, especially when you're new to a video game. And I want to help y'all answer all of those questions. So do leave your comments down below asking a lot of simple questions. I know we have a whole bunch of fans out there who are going to answer your questions almost right away in the comments. Everybody, be supportive, be helpful, be great to one another, and we're going to have a great time. So let's go ahead and jump in. I'm using a sweet little chickadoo image to jump on in here. Let's confirm and start our new file. And like I said, we're we're just gonna go for it like it's a brand new thing a thousand light years away from earth on a planet known as the far far range beatrix lebeau begins her first day as a slime rancher this is new i haven't seen that before all right so we're moving around now if you're using an xbox controller things are going to be a little bit different but uh there should be a tutorial here that tells you all the same stuff you're seeing here you see a little dude running around over in the corner over there that's our very first slime let's go get it you can hold shift to sprint i'm not sure what the button is on xbox but it'll tell you over there space bar to jump again not sure what the button is on xbox but it'll tell you on the side there now this thing in my hand here this is our vac pack this is going to be our major tool that we're going to be using to do everything as it says right there on the right hand side it says right click i'm gonna assume that's probably right trigger on the xbox to suck things up maybe it's left trigger i don't know so we're gonna do that boom we just sucked up a slime and this is how you're gonna be getting slimes now slimes are the key to the economy in slime rancher okay you are going to ranch slimes by going around vacking them up with your vac pack we've got a couple more slimes around here let's go pick them up boop boop and we just got the other key to Slime Rancher's economy, a plort. Now, this thing right here, this is a corral, okay? This is where you're going to be keeping your slimes, and they give you the first one for free. Let's walk around here on the farm real quick so we can show you a couple things before we really start messing around with this. You See these? We have more plots around here, okay? Once we make some money, shown in the lower left-hand corner here, you see the 250. Those are your new bucks. That's how much money you have. You'll also see a red meter there. That's your health. You can take damage from certain slimes and other kinds of dangers. And the uh, blue bar is your spirit, your, uh, your sprint energy. So uh, once you uh, run out of stamina, that's the word I would like to use for that, stamina, um, you'll no longer be able to sprint. So let's go ahead and I'm going to show you all that. So I'm just going to run out my energy real quick. Let's go pick up this guy. All right, so now you see, I can't sprint anymore. I gotta wait for my energy to come back. So after a little bit of time, you're gonna notice that the stamina is gonna start to rebuild, and there we go. We will see some chickadoos running around. Chickadoos are baby chickens. We'll talk about chickens a little bit later. Uh, and every time you pick up something new, you'll get a new Slimepedia entry. So let's go quickly look at our Slimepedia just so you guys are aware of that. We got the Slimepedia here. This will tell you anything you need to know. If you're having trouble remembering how to do things, you can come back and you can look back at the tutorial stuff that you've already learned. It also has some more information, ranching basics, uh, feeding slimes, the plort market, how it all works. So if you're ever confused uh, about any of these basic things in Slime Rancher, you can always come back to your Slimepedia and look at the tutorials tab. It'll also give you information on all the different slimes. It'll tell you about their diets, their favorite food, which that'll become important here in a little bit. Uh, it'll give you a little bit of interesting information about why these slimes are important to the economy of the game so it's sort of like a story element there and what makes them dangerous what the value of their plorts are uh, really interesting stuff uh, if you scroll down through here we have all the different slimes we also have resources so we're going to see a couple of those see the chickadoo counts as a resource all right it's called future meat uh, and so again information about all this stuff we might spend some time going through the slimepedia in the future if that's something that y'all are interested in on the ranch we have all the different things that you can actually get on the ranch so the different uh, types of buildings that you can build and the different areas that you can unlock and on the world you have the different areas of the world and it's going to tell you some information about those different areas 
So the Slimepede is a really useful piece of information. So like I was saying, we have these different plots all around our ranch, okay? If you come up to one of these sides here, you press E to activate, you can spend some money and you can build a new item on your ranch. So for example, I'm gonna go ahead and build a garden. I really like to have gardens uh, in order to produce our own food and it's something that we can afford already with the 250 new bucks that we have. So let's get a garden. Okay, so now we have our corral over here and we have our garden over here. I'm going to quickly, while we're talking about other stuff, I'm gonna grab these carrots. Uh, these carrots just kind of spawn here on their own. Whenever you start, there will always be these carrots sitting over here. And uh, what you're gonna do with the garden, so carrots are obviously food, you use them to feed certain slimes and then that's how you get plorts from the slimes. You come over to this garden, shoot the carrot right into this little guy here. He's a cute little structure here, a little mouth and everything like that. You shoot that in there and now you'll see it's starting to grow here. And so after a little bit of time, we're gonna have some carrots here. Now, whenever you place a building onto one of these plots, you can come up to this uh, structure and press E again and now you can get some upgrades. So nutrient soil is going to make sure that we get uh, the maximum harvest. So every harvest can range in a certain number of carrots. Let's say for example, if we don't have nutrient soil, maybe on one of our harvests we only get eight carrots. Maybe on one we get 10 carrots. Maybe on one we get 12 carrots. The maximum for carrots I do believe is 20. Uh, and so if we get the nutrient soil upgrade, that's going to give us 20 carrots every time we get a harvest. So that's really great. Uh, we just got a mail from Casey. We'll go look at the mail system in a second as well. Additionally, with the gardens, we have the sprinkler, which makes plants grow twice as fast. So you're gonna get twice the yield per day out of them. And then finally, we have the scare slime. And the scare slime is something that will pop up. It's kind of like a scarecrow. And basically it means that any slimes that wander over here, they're not gonna eat your food because they're gonna see that scare slime, they're gonna run away. Now, let's continue to walk around the farm. We're not doing too much on the ranch just yet. Let's go look at these uh, places. We have a couple of areas here. You'll see there are these big pink barriers, all right? You can't get through them just yet. But if you come over to this structure over here, press E to activate, you can expand the ranch with the ranch expansion tool. Each one of these costs a certain amount of new bucks. This one right here is the most expensive for the lab, the sciencey area of the map. We'll talk about slime science in the future once we unlock this guy. And it costs 10,000 new bucks. Obviously, that's a lot of money. We only started with 250, right? And uh, we'll talk more about money as we move a little bit along. Let's run over here real quick. You'll see we have another one over here, which this is the cave expansion into the grotto, a dark and gloomy cavern above the sea, uh, and uh, it costs $17.95, much more affordable. Uh, that's something that you can get pretty early on. Uh, now I'm gonna wait for my energy to run up so I can come show you the other one that's available to us shortly, and that is the overgrowth, the ranch's very own wild side. And in the overgrowth, you actually get access to another blocked off area called the docks. Okay, let's pick up these plorts. Looks like we've got a couple more plorts around here that our pink slimes must have left for us before I picked them up. So let's go ahead and throw these guys into the corral as it asked us to do at the beginning. All right, we've done that. So the way I did that, I selected them on my uh, toolbar here. You see it says one, two, three, and four. I selected them and by left clicking, I was able to fire them out. I can do the same thing with the plorts that they gave me, right? And the carrots that I have. And these guys are gonna be hungry. So why don't we give them a couple carrots and you'll see what happens. Boom, he just produced a plort. That's right. If you didn't figure it out yet, now you know we are essentially farming slime poop. It's great. Look at how cute they are jumping up on top of each other. It's wonderful. Let's fire another carrot in there, feed one of them. Wonderful. And now we got some more plorts. Let's pick up these plorts and I'll show you why plorts matter, okay? We'll leave these pink slimes in here for now. All right, we come over to this thing over here. This is the plort market. The plort market is where you're going to be selling your plorts. Now you'll see that there are little arrows next to each of these numbers here. Uh, and that is telling you uh, how valuable these plorts are compared to how much they were uh, valued at yesterday, okay? So since this is day one, that doesn't really mean anything right now. They're all green because yesterday technically didn't exist. So yesterday they were all worth zero. Uh, at midnight each night, that ticks over. Uh, and so then the values are going to change. If you've sold a lot of one type of plort in a day, the value is going to go down. If it's been a long time since you've sold a certain type of plort, the value is going to go up. So a lot of people like to use silo systems, which I'll show you if we go over to here. We can't buy one yet. 
but you can buy a silo. A lot of people like to use silos in order to store up certain plorts until they have a very high value on the plort market. And once you've done that, uh, you can then wait until they have a value that you really like, go gather up all your plorts and sell them all at once before the day's over because the value's not gonna change. It only changes once per day. So once you've got a good value there for your plorts, you can, uh, grab all those plorts and make a big chunk of money off of them. All right, let's sell those plorts. Now let me quickly look around the farm, make sure that's pretty much everything I wanted to show y'all. We'll talk about that thing a little bit later. Uh, let us go and look at our um, mail. So here's where you're going to see your mail system. This is us. We are playing as Beatrix LeBeau or B or Bia, as I like to call her, but a lot of people call her B. Uh, and you, here you can get access to your star mail and eventually there will be another thing here called 7z rewards So we'll talk about that once we get there in this file So let's open up our star mail and let's read these messages uh, So the first one that we got was from the 7z corporation and then we'll read this one from Casey. So as the 7Z Corporation, welcome to the Farfar Far Rage. Ms. LeBeau, the 7Z Corporation would like to welcome you to the Farfar Far Rage. Welcome. And extend our support in your bold new ventures as a slime rancher. Support extended. We'd also like to request that you exercise caution in your first few days in the range until you get more familiar with the surroundings. Traveling at night is not advisable. Lastly, should you require any additional tools for your backpack or items to make your slime ranching experience easier, the 7Z Corporation will be pleased to provide them to you from the shop located just outside your ranch house. The 7Z Corporation provided the tools you need to get the job done for us for us to be the 7Z Corporation. Thank you, 7Z. And so we'll show off that shop here in just a second. All right, and this is from Casey. All right, Casey's a friend of ours from back home. Maybe even more than a friend. Rise and shine. Hi, Bia. What's it like to sleep for a whole year? Did you dream? I can't imagine what that's like. 7Z puts you in a pod and then lights out for all that time. <laughs> wow. What's the far, far range like? Have you started exploring? Is the air as clear as they say? I bet it's really beautiful. I'm probably asking too many questions. I believe you have a lot of work to do on that ranch. I still can't believe it's yours now. <laughs> I, I guess I better leave you to it and just keep it short. Good luck, Bia. If anyone can make it out there, it's you. Casey. Aw, we're going to get a lot of letters from Casey as we go along. Okay, so over here is the shop that the 7Z letter was talking about. If we go here, we can buy backpack upgrades. There will also additionally in a little bit uh, in the future, once we get the 7Z upgrades, there will be another shop here where you can adjust your chroma packs. We'll talk about that when we get to it. But let us go here and you can see that there are upgrades that we can buy. The tank booster is probably my favorite one to get early on because it increases the amount that you can store in each of your storage slots. By default, you can hold 20 per slot. If you buy that, you can hold 30 per slot. And there's going to be higher levels to that as well. Power core gives us more stamina. Uh, heart module gives us more health. The jetpack gives us the jetpack ability. Very important. And the water tank also very important allows us to pick up water and use that uh, we can shoot it around so that is that now this is asking us to use our farm obviously we already did that because we did things a little bit out of order but that's fine we will deal with that uh, in a little bit once we have a little bit more food so now that we've kind of talked about what's going on over here on the ranch and by the way this is the range exchange it's not online yet so we'll talk about that when it does come online let's go out into the world now one thing that you want to know you do have a map i believe it's probably back on an xbox controller but i can't say for sure but i know on a keyboard it is m so here we can see the entirety of our ranch this is the area that we currently have open just this small area so that's where we were just running around here's the grotto the overgrowth the lab and the docks okay so we're going to go out here onto the uh, into the dry reef and uh, when we look when we're out here we're going to find a map node that's going to help us expand our map as well so here's where we're going to start to see the real world of slime ranchers start to awaken i'm going to run over here real quick i'm gonna grab all these carrots i always like to grab as much food as i can and there's a big reason for us to be grabbing as much food as we can uh, big reason that's actually a pun a little bit um so we're gonna be doing that we've got pogo fruits we got carrots these are all great so as you can see we have two different types of foods we have fruits and we have veggies and that does uh, come into play quite a bit because many of the slimes have their own diets there's also meat uh, as we saw with the chickadoos being future meat I'm picking up all of the plorts I find. Sorry, I'm going really fast, but this is kind of the optimal way to do this. So I'm going to grab all this food, and then I'm going to take a step back here in a second. Let's grab all that stuff. Okay. And let me run over here. And I'm going to do the same, and then we'll talk a little bit. So over here, we're going to see some more slimes. Okay. 
Uh, we see we got our pink slimes, but we've also got rock slimes. And we just saw the very first Largo that we've seen so far. Now let me get rid of this pink slime so we can pick up a rock slime. Okay. And rock slimes are great. They are vegetarians. They only eat veggies. But Largos, which you're seeing happen here. Here, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make one in a vacuum so we can talk a little bit about Largos. Um, and let me... I'm going to grab all this. Oh, I don't have a jetpack yet. That's something I got to get used to. You'll also see Tabby Slime over here. Let's grab a Tabby real quick so we can get the Slimepedia entry for it. Those are little cat slimes. They only eat meat. Uh, and let me grab as many of these pogo fruits as we can. Like I said, I want to get a lot of food here for a very important reason. Uh, so let's go ahead and grab all this stuff. Okay, now. A little chicken over here. This little hen hen. Let me run back this way because we missed a couple things. Oh, but I do want to grab this really fast. This is where the first map node is. We grab this, okay? Press E on that. Boom, we have now revealed this part of the map. So those are the things you're going to want to be looking for if you want to expand your map. So now we have the dry reef open, and you're going to notice a couple of things on here. There's little symbols up in the upper left-hand corner now. We have zero of three. These are slime keys. You use these to open up new areas. Um, I'll show you a slime door actually right now. And uh, then we will head back and I'll talk about Largos and things. We'll also talk about these in a second, but I want to go back to the first one. Okay, so real quick, this over here... Do, 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 through this cave. This is a slime door. So this leads us to a whole new region of the game. So if we go to our look through our map, we'll see that this is a whole new area here. I can tell you ahead of time, this is called the Indigo Quarry. There's going to be unique uh, foods that we're going to be able to find, unique slimes that we're going to be able to find. Each of these new, new areas adds new slimes, new items, new foods, new treasures, uh, more slime keys, all kinds of stuff. All right. So uh, you really want to um, be sure to expand into every area uh, that you can. So this is the Indigo Quarry, and we'll talk again about those a little bit in the future. Now, here's some more Largos. These are Feral Largos, so they're angry. If you want them to not be angry, all you gotta do, feed them, okay? Now look, now he's happy, okay? So that's a little happy little slime over there. Uh, but you can also just run past them. It's no big deal. Now, before we go on to doing our big thing, let me uh, come back this way because I want to talk to y'all about Largos. So, uh, we don't have... Oh, we, I might be able to get some. Hold on. Let's see if I can't get some favorite food over here to d demonstrate the, uh, the power of favorite foods. So, I'm going to quickly throw these pink plorts over here. Okay. And we're actually going to quickly uh, refill our garden as well just to kind of... Um, get rid of that message. All right, so I'm selling these off just because I have them in my inventory. We're going to slow throw this slime in here. Now, when it comes to putting different types of slimes in the same corral, you're only going to want to put uh, two different types total, okay? Um, and that'll become a little bit clearer in the future, but uh, that's important. Hey, look, we got some carrots. Well, I can show you a trick, but you don't really need to do this trick anymore. So um, don't worry about this, but it does work. If you remove the crops, okay, it costs us 10 new bucks, so it does waste money. All right, so generally you're not gonna wanna do that, okay? But what that did, look, it actually like lifted all those up for us. That so makes it easier for us to grab them. I'm only doing this so that I can show off that when you do this, build the garden, and then it gets rid of the tutorial for us, right? However, okay, let's throw all these around. Just wanna, yeah, let's keep those there. Um, so that's that with the garden. Now, let's talk about Largos. Largos you get when, here, let's go ahead and let's feed these guys a little bit. We're going to see a Largo get formed. Now, this is what happens when one slime eats the plort of another slime. You're going to see that rock slime just went over, and boom, we now have a pink rock Largo. We actually uh, have names for all the Largos uh, in our file. This is all just, you know, here on the Stump Price channel in the world of Stumped. We have names for all of the Largos. We call these guys Jelly Rolls because they roll around and they're kind of like pink jelly. I think it's adorable. All right. Now, I would like to see, let me grab this. I would like to see if I can't get a hold of a heartbeat, which is a specific type of food that the uh, rock slimes uh, love. That's their favorite food. And I'll show you in a second if we go look at our Slimepedia. Okay, sometimes they grow up here, but I don't see one. I'm about to sneeze. <coughs> All right, excuse me there. Hopefully I edited that sneeze out. All right, uh, so sometimes there is a heartbeat up on here. We don't have a jetpack, so I'm not going to mess around with it too much. I can jump down here and it'll be fine. So let's just go ahead and do that. We'll look around. Oh, I did see one. Okay, cool. So uh, you'll also see a little green soccer ball thing in the corner over there. We'll talk about that in a second. 
But let us grab these heartbeats. Oh, wonderful. We're going to be able to plant some heartbeats, which are going to be even better than carrots uh, for us. Now, this is a treasure pot, and this is locked. So those, those won't unlock for quite a while. We're going to have to be doing some science in order to unlock those. So we've got some time for that. But if we look at our map, that's the other symbol here. There are 14 treasure pods on the dry reef, okay? Uh, if we go back... I guess we'll have to uh, head on actually into this location. You'll be able to see the map there. and It'll tell us how many are on the starter zone as well. If I walk down this way, uh, we would find that there is actually another one down there. There's actually one over there. They're all over the place. So we'll do some episodes in the future where we go around looking at all the treasure pods, probably when we actually have the ability to unlock some. There's a little pathway back here. So if you ever want to get some heartbeats right off the bat, a little spot where they grow right there, and then you can walk back up this way, jump back onto the ground, and you are now right in front of your area. No problem, no jetpack needed. Now, what's this little guy? This is a message from our predecessor. So why don't we read this first one and then we can uh, get back to our farm and work on some things. Hello, Beatrix. The name's Hobson Twilligers, rancher, explorer, and the former owner of this here ranch you now call your own. Pleased to make your acquaintance. I was a rancher for more years than I can remember and felt that there was one last adventure left in me, so I've set off to find just that. But before I go, I'm taking one last tour around this here land I love. So keep your papers peeled for notes like these if you want to hear what an old coot has to say every now and again. Be talking to you, H. I should probably give it more of like a southern accent, but I, I, for some reason I always feel like he should sound like bah, 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 bah. Anyway, let's head back this way. So now I can demonstrate to you the power of favorite foods. Okay, so y'all have seen that when I feed one uh, piece of food to a slime, you get one plort, okay? Now, if I feed one piece of food to this jelly roll, that is not its favorite food, which, like I said, if we go to the Slimepedia, go to Slimes, go to Rock Slimes, we know that their favorite food is Heartbeats. And you might be asking me, but Price, this isn't just a Rock Slime, this is a Largo. Here's the beauty of Largos. They get all the best of both types of slimes. So, if we had mixed this with a different slime, it would have two different favorite foods. But because pink slimes have no favorite food, it only has one favorite food. Now, let's give this Jelly Roll one carrot. Now, what do we get out of that? One pink plort and one rock plort, okay? Now we're gonna leave that rock plort in there and you're gonna see these pink slimes, they're gonna go right for it, okay? Now, when I feed you your favorite food, what are you gonna give me there, buddy? Oh, nope. Gotta give him a second to get hungry. Nope, don't want the uh, pink slime to eat that. You're not hungry, are you? Do, 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 do. They're not always hungry, so you gotta wait a little bit. Nope, okay, well. I will go then find a wild slime do, 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 to demonstrate this on. So let's grab a pink plort over here, just so I can have one. And we are going to find, that's a phosphor slime. Let's go ahead and let's grab a phosphor slime real quick just to get the Slimepedia entry. Uh, they only come out at night and they're actually allergic to the sun. So there are some special items to get for them. Now, where's a rock slime? Here's a jelly roll. Hello there, jelly roll. Let's bring you to a safe place where I can show people things without worrying about other slimes messing you up. Okay, so let's feed you a heartbeat. Why don't you go ahead and eat that, buddy? Here we go, and what do we get? Two of each type of plort. We got two rock plorts and two pink plorts, okay? So we have doubled the efficiency of our slimes when we do that, okay? It's really useful. I'm actually gonna get rid of these pink plorts. I'm gonna grab these rock plorts because those are worth way more. Now. Uh, what I would like to do is I would like to plant these heartbeats. So if I can, what I might do is I'm going to sell these rock plorts. Maybe we'll sell a couple more pink plorts from within our corral over here. Maybe we'll have enough to make a second garden and I can make a heartbeat garden as well as our carrot garden. So let's sell these. Boop, boop. Okay. And just a couple of these pink plorts. And then we can really get a move in on trying to uh, get some other things done. Okay, so pink plorts away. We have 250, which is the cost of another garden. And we're going to put this garden uh, right next door. Right next door. Okay, we're going to put it right here. So, new garden. Grab that. Heartbeats. So, you know how I talked about how the uh, benefits of slimes 
uh, are doubled for the Largos. So not only do these guys have a favorite food of heartbeats, but because they're also half pink slime, they will eat anything. So normally a rock slime is not going to eat fruit or meat, okay? They're only gonna eat vegetables, but if I throw this at that guy, he'll eat that chicken. Why? Because he's got a pink slime as part of his species. Okay, same with fruit. If I were to shoot a fruit at this guy and he was hungry, I don't think he is, uh, then he would eat that as well. I'm gonna fire a bunch of carrots in here because if you cover the ground with food, they will eat it. Uh, and I'm gonna launch a heartbeat in here as well. Maybe one of them will eat that uh, and that'll get us some extra stuff. Now these guys will eventually eat all these rock, uh, rock plorts because they basically are insatiable. Slimes will eat plorts. They really wanna eat plorts. Now, you may be asking yourself, but Price, why don't I want to mix together all of the slimes? Why would I uh, not just make a super slime that has all the benefits of every slime? Well, let's go talk about what that means. And actually, let's go grab a bunch of our carrots, because I'm going to need these for another thing that we're going to do before we end this episode. Okay, let's go ahead and grab all of these. All right, we've got tons of carrots, tons, tons, tons of carrots, so we don't have to worry about food too much at all. Oh, and as you can see, our gel... <clears throat> Excuse me. Our jelly rolls are already getting way out of line, and that's just going to happen, okay? And we're going to have to uh, earn some money in order to deal with that. So we'll do that in a little bit as well. But first things first. Price, price, price. Why do we not want to mix together um, all of the different slimes? Well, if we grab this here phosphor slime and we feed him a pink plort, now we got ourselves a firefly, a nice beautiful pink uh, phosphor combo here. And, uh, or actually night lights, we call these ones night lights. And uh, if I were to say, so there's tabbies over here. So let's say I bring this guy over here and I feed this guy, let's, let's feed the phosphor as well. Okay, so let's watch what happens. If I take this phosphor plort, okay, and I feed it to that tabby. Now we've got a problem on our hands. It's what we call a tar. And as you'll see, that tar is gonna go around eating other slimes and making more tars. This is a problem. Now, if you grab them with your backpack, you can launch them out into the slime sea and uh, they will die, okay? So that's good. That's how we can save ourselves from these guys. Also, you can use, uh, is there another tar? Are we good? All right, I think we got them all. Now, the other thing you could do is once you have the water tank, you can uh, use that water tank to pick up water and uh, that water will harm the tars. So that's why the water tank can be so useful. It can help you to defend yourself against the tars. Um, but tars are pretty dangerous and you definitely don't want them to get loose on your farm because if they do, they are going to destroy as many slimes as they can, okay? There are certain types of defenses and things that we can set up in order to protect ourselves from tars, but ultimately the best defense is to prevent tars from happening whatsoever. Okay, now what was this other big thing that I wanted to do? Well, the big thing, is that big thing over there. Let's go over here and let's check out this guy, which is a pink Gordo. Now the Gordos you're gonna find all around. They're in certain little special locations. There is one Gordo of every type. Ooh, those are some Q berries. We'll hold on to those. Um, there's one, at least one Gordo of every type. There are a couple of duplicates. There are, I believe, two rock Gordos and I believe two pink Gordos throughout the different lands. And uh, what you need to do with the Gordos is feed them. So let's feed this Gordo with all of this food that we brought over here. And let's see if that helps us out at all and what that makes happen. All right, just enough food there. So I'll actually have to look at the numbers that I had there. I probably had 30 pieces of food, I think. I can bust these things open and we'll get ourselves a couple things. We have some more pink slimes here if we want to get some more pink slimes into our corral, which might not be a bad idea. Uh, let's go ahead and grab these different pieces of food. I'm going to go ahead and grab all these slimes so we can maybe make some more uh, Largos. And this is the main thing that we did this for, right? Oh, and that's actually a special hen. Let's go ahead and grab him real quick. That's a stony hen. It's a different species of hen. It's actually the favorite food of the tabby, okay? Always make sure to at least vacuum up everything once because you want to get the entry for your um, Slimepedia. Okay, now this, the slime key. Remember those doors I talked about earlier? Remember this number up here in the corner? That's where you get slime keys. You get slime keys from Gordos. So now one thing to notice, okay, is that this area of the map, the far, far, or the uh, dry reef, it also extends out to here. So I can go ahead and tell you there is a Gordo right around here, and this is a tabby Gordo. That gives you a teleporter 
that takes you out to here. And we'll do that on a future episode, but that's how you access this area. So don't worry about not being able to get there. Um, if, like if you try with a jetpack or something like that, you got to use the Gordo to get there. Uh, there's also another Gordo right around down here, and we'll go uh, work on that one in the future when we need our second slime key. But for now, we've got one, and that's going to be enough for us to really get started with some stuff. All right, I'm looking at the time. We're about 30 minutes in. I'll go a little bit longer on this because I do like to make longer episodes of things. So if you're new to the channel, just know I do long episodes. I hope you like that because that's what I like to do. Just uh, it works better for me, I think. Now, let's head on home. Let's uh, extend the amount of slimes that we have. Let's get to feeding them a whole bunch. And hopefully we can get ourselves a lot of plorts to uh, upgrade some things. Now, normally I talk about how I don't really love having a lot of pink slimes because pink slimes, at the end of the day, they're not that valuable. But in the future, they will become valuable. And ultimately on this file, I do want to um, show you guys kind of everything. So I'm gonna sell off all these pink plorts that we found out in the wild, okay? And let's go grab that one pink slime that just got launched into the sun. Come here, little buddy. <laughs> I want you to get in here with the rest of your friends. Now, you can fit a lot of slimes into each of these corrals. Uh, it really comes down to your preference as to what you're willing to deal with because um, you can really stack these things pretty high. I think something around 10 to 15 slimes is probably the best that you're going to want to get to. A little bit, uh, not much higher than that because then it does start to get a little unruly. So let's see how many of these guys we got. We got one, two, three, four, five, six. All right, so I think. I'm gonna grab the rest of these little pink guys, the little ones, and we're gonna just get rid of them. We're gonna send them back out onto the uh, dry reef. They can go live wild with all their friends, no problem. Another thing, lore-wise, but let me let me first let's let's do this real quick. Uh, we don't have enough money for it. Okay, let's grab all these pink plorts. Let's uh, go grab all these heartbeats and feed all these guys. Now nah, get back in there, Jelly Roll. I know you want to get out. Okay, give me all these. Thank you. Okay. Hello there, little hen-hen. You might want to stay away from the jelly rolls. I'm just saying. A little dangerous. Okay, let's get some of this in here. Okay. Let's get all these guys eaten. All right. And uh, we'll gather up all the uh, plorts from them. And I'd like to start upgrading that corral. So we'll talk about upgrades here for a little bit. And uh, maybe that'll be where we'll end, is after we've got a nicely upgraded corral, which should not take too long for us to get now that we've got some good plort action going on. Okay. The big thing that you're going to want to set yourself up for in the future is not having to actually get into your slime corrals like that. Oh, I should probably explain that, actually, yeah. One thing that's uh, really important to know about these corrals, you can walk through them, okay? They can't. You can shoot through them. They can't, okay? So all the actions that you take, right? Like, so, like, for example, you see these things in the corner over here? If I were to go like this, the plorts are not going to come through there. But... If I kind of like stick the front of my gun in here and I do this, that works. So there's actually a technique I use sometimes to try and get plorts when uh, I can't, uh, when I don't have a plort collector, which we're going to hopefully buy here in just a second, as long as we have enough. Okay, so let's sell off these plorts that I just got and let's do some upgrades on this corral. Okay. Now, like I said before, you come to this little device here on the side, you press E to activate, and here are all the different upgrades that you can get. So let's talk about all these upgrades before we go off and buy some. Now, the first one you're gonna see here is high walls, higher corral walls, ensure that even the bounciest of slimes will have difficulty escaping. This is a necessity. Uh, you have to get this upgrade if you're gonna wanna have corrals that are actually gonna keep your slimes inside the corrals. Um, it just builds it about twice as high, very important. We're actually gonna go ahead and buy that right now, okay? Now the music box, this music plays a soothing tune that greatly reduces slime agitation. We don't really have a problem with that yet. Rock slimes and pink slimes don't tend to get very agitated. Most of the starter slimes do not get agitated. But later on, we're gonna have slimes that'll do things like explode, that will try and jump and attack you and get really angry. So there's a good reason to get that for certain slime combos, certain largos. Uh, the air net is a force barrier that covers the top of a corral. It can take a few hits before needing to recharge. It'll create a roof. Now it's not a perfect roof. If they jump up into it enough times, they're gonna pop that roof and then it takes time for it to recharge. So that's one reason why you don't wanna have too many slimes hanging around in each of these corrals. 
Uh, the solar shield, the solar shield will encase a corral in a dim shade, protecting the slimes from sensitive or that are sensitive to light. So any phosphors or phosphor largos are sensitive to light. Uh, so you're going to want to have a solar shield to protect them from the light. Additionally, there's a slime that we're going to get way down the line called a mosaic slime. And that slime uh, also is affected by sunlight. So having the solar shield is useful for certain uh, specific types of slimes. The next thing, and this is the one that we're actually going to buy, is the plort collector. Plort collector will vacuum up two types of plorts in a corral at regular intervals, depositing them into a storage tank so long as space available. Basically, it vacuums up the whole floor and gathers up all of the plorts so that you don't have to get in there. You can just pull them out. We're going to buy that. Lastly, there's an auto feeder. Uh, you can pump that full of food and it will automatically release um, food at regular intervals that you can adjust in order to um, help you to feed them while you're not on the farm, right? If you're out exploring and you wanna make sure that they get fed, you can use that and you will be fine. This one, enjoy that. Okay, so I can also make this plort collector. This is the plort collector. I can make it work whenever I want just by pressing E, boom. And all the plorts that are on the ground will get vacuumed up. You'll see we just had one of each type of plort on the ground. Not too much because we just gathered up all the rest of them. But that's how that's going to work. So you get that plort collector. You're going to save yourself a whole lot of hassle by doing that. So uh, I guess... This might be a good place to end this episode to start with um, because I would like to see y'all's questions before I go too much further. Uh, I guess the last thing that we can do is we can go ahead and we can open up the next uh, slime area, the indigo quarry, and have a quick look through there while we um, do our final goodbyes for this episode. So let's just launch a bunch of carrots in here. Why not? While we're gone, they can eat. Uh, I like to just, you know, if I have extra food, just throw it there. Um, although, on second thought... It might be good to bring some of those carrots with me. Let's, uh, let's try that again. Come here. Come here, carrots. Come here. Go pick them all up. Like I said, you can stand in the corner and do this little trick, and uh, that'll help you out a little bit. Okay. I figure I might as well. There's another thing I can do with these. I can go, uh, there's a Largo that I can go ahead and start feeding. Now, we're not going to be able to um, finish that feeding, but at least we can get some of it going. Grab some of these heartbeats, too. Why not? Oh, get in there. And we're definitely going to want to upgrade these things in the future as well. Now, as far as these Q-berries are concerned, I think what I'm going to do is we're actually going to remove these crops. We're going to turn these into Q-berries here. And I'll just let them eat the, le the last one. Now, the thing about Q-berries, Q-berries are the favorite food of phosphor slimes. So next time, we'll get some phosphor combos. Maybe we'll do some phosphor tabbies, because those are the other two slimes that we've seen over here. So we're going to go unlock the indigo quarry. That's the slime door that I showed you all before. Uh, let's grab another carrot, because we can. Um, now, oh, hey, that's a lucky slime. If you have a hen, which I don't see any hens around, you can feed the lucky slime. He's only a temporary slime, so we're not going to be fortunate enough to be able to feed him. And now you see he's disappeared. But if we had had a chicken and we fed that to him, he would have launched into the sky and we would have gotten money. That's a random slime. They appear from time to time. They're really cool. Um, and so you just got to be lucky when that happens. Oh, we just got a letter from Thora West. We'll read that probably next time. Um, so there's those lucky slimes, and then there's also golden slimes that are also a random slime that appear that are unique. Uh, let's go ahead and read this next Hobson message. Um, the entire cave system was sealed off from a cave-in when I first discovered it. Maybe that's why fellas up ahead are so grumpy. Haven't had a bite in a long time. In any case, don't let that long-awaited bite come from your own rump. Bring some food to calm them down. H. So that's Hobson giving us little tips and tricks as we go along here, telling us about his experience. Hello. Hi, guy. See, he's still happy. Um, now, let's run on up here. Let's open this door. Now, we don't have a jetpack yet, so we're not going to be able to experience all of the indigo quarry. But we can look at the first little bit and see a couple of the new slimes that you unlock when you come into this area. So we've got ourselves another Hobson message up ahead. Let's go ahead and read this Hobson message. I was always happiest when I was by my lonesome. Places like this old quarry really suited me nice. Oh, really suited me. Nice and quiet and mostly empty. So I figured that life on the far, far range would suit me just as well. And well, wouldn't you just know it? I come all this way and the first person I see, well, she changed how I saw things, I guess. Quiet wasn't good anymore. I liked her laugh. H. Aww. And there's a couple of cute little love stories that we learn about as we play along in this game as well. Ooh, look at this. Neat, an odd onion. 
we can uh, we can maybe discuss that in the future but also you're gonna see some new slimes around here are those heartbeats give me those heartbeats those aren't yours those are mine all right you're gonna see aha there's one a boom slime these guys they explode they eat chickens they are dangerous those are gonna be the first slimes that we're gonna interact with where we're gonna have to worry about having uh, something to prevent them from getting angry at us these guys are super cool oh man I love a lot of these Largos they're great uh, let's go ahead and move along before we run into any trouble with those booms because they are dangerous right there you see a rock slime just ran into me now the reason that I brought these uh, vegetables with me should be pretty apparent here in just a second. Here's another treasure pod that we will deal with a little bit later. Uh, oh, and the map node for this area is right here. Let's open up our map right here on the map. Press E to activate. Ta da! We've got our new map area. So if you look at this the way that we got into here, uh, you'll see that we walked around this way. We spiraled our way through this little cave. We came up around this corner. This is where the door was, it's like right about here. And then we walked straight through here, through this cave, and that's where the map node is. And also, the next Gordo. Uh, now, this isn't actually the next Gordo that you need to feed. This is just the next Gordo that we're gonna feed, because we were coming out this way anyways. And I figured, why not? So, let's feed him all the carrots first. Okay. That's 20 carrots we just fed him. And now we have heartbeats. And remember, rock slimes, what's their favorite food? the heartbeat so with gordos it's the same thing it counts twice as much so each of these heartbeats is going to count as two food points as we call them all right so there we go so we just gave them nine of those but since they're worth two we basically just gave them 18 so total we've given about 38 food points now total they need about 50 i believe in order to pop so let's give them these two odd onions so that's 40 right there that we've given them so we need 10 more food points and this guy's gonna pop all the gordos except for the first pink one seem to require 50 food points all right this guy he's had about 40 we'll get him a couple more vegetables and he should pop let's see maybe we can go back here maybe there's still some uh carrots that we can grab give me all these gotta be careful get a little bit hurt please don't hurt me so much got those go ahead and jump up here uh now oh the way I like to do um, feeding the slimes is pretty, or feeding the gordos, is pretty much just when you know you're going to an area where there's a gordo, just bring a whole bunch of their uh, types of food that they like. Doesn't have to be their favorite food. It can just be any kind of food. I'm gonna grab all these. Oh, that's the music. We know there's a tar around, so we need to be careful. Yeah, there's the tar. Okay, uh, let's grab them. Try and get rid of them. Like I said, it's always best to try and stop a tar problem before it becomes a bigger problem. Uh, all right. Now, are there any more plorts on the ground? Not a lot. Not a lot. I think that they've been eating all the plorts, turning into Largos. That's why we got the uh, tar problem. But I digress. Let's feed this guy a little bit more. Okay. Now, I bet you I was right there on the math. Now, let's get all these guys out of here, and you'll see that this one did not actually give us a slime key. This gave us a portal to get back home. But this portal is a pretty special one. Uh, and actually, because it's special, it's not going to help us out right now. So, what's so special about this portal? Let's just grab this food, because why not? Do, 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 do. It brings us onto this side. Is there an H over here? Oh, I thought there might have been an H. Uh, this brings us onto this side of our ranch. However, we haven't unlocked this space yet. So, check our map. We are here behind the grotto and over here is where we would buy the doorway into the grotto see that so right now this teleport is kind of useless we got to go back to the indigo quarry but it's definitely something you're going to eventually want because that's going to allow you to do kind of loops right i can be on the farm and be like i need to go get some stuff from the indigo quarry so what do i do i run i grab some stuff along the way maybe i go out here and grab some things and then i come back in and boop i'm back home right or later on when we can set up our own two-way teleporters you can teleport out that way set up your science machines and it's going to help you out quite a bit so that's where you get that teleporter that's how you feed that gordo that's where he's located now in this cave that's not the only thing that's here there is another passageway here that's going to lead us out into the next area uh, and here we may see another set of new slimes Depends on the time of day. Probably not until evening. Oh, 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 a food that we're going to want. Give me these. Oka Okas. Oka Okas are great. They're going to be the favorite food of one of the slimes that we're going to get here um, soonish. The rad slimes. So hopefully some rads will pop up. Here you can see some more boom slimes. 
Oh, these slimes, they're wild and crazy. But there's also another type of slime that is kind of hidden away. So we're going to try and show you off that one because this is a very valuable slime that we're going to want to get a hold of pretty quickly. Maybe like right now. Do, 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 do. So if we come in here, we found this awesome little cave, and there they are. The crystal slimes. These are one of my favorite slimes. I love crystal slimes. They make some very pretty largos. This whole area is very pretty. I'm not going to jump too deep into here because I don't have a jetpack and it does make it a little bit crazy to kind of get to. Oh, but there's a lot of plorts. I want those plorts. Give me those plorts! And all these slimes. So we're going to have to make ourselves another corral. And we're going to have to pick something to mix with these guys. Uh, and hopefully we'll pick something that makes them really easy to feed. Oh, there's tars. And there is not any uh, water around here for us to access. Let's read this Hobson message real fast. I once came here to collect crystals for a little project of mine. Was trapped here for nearly two days when these curious crystal slimes came rolling my way and started firing off those dangerous shards. I thought I was going to kick the bucket. The crystals were for a wind chime. I bet Thora still has it hanging from her porch. Worth it. Aw, they're so cute. Thora and Hobson. So adorable. Okay. Now, we got to get ourselves out of here. There's obviously tars everywhere, so I need to just kind of do my best to escape. Uh, I apologize to all little slimes over here. These are crystal shards. Those hurt, and those are what crystal slimes make. Ouch. So we have to be uh, careful about those. So this is going to get us out of this little cave. Again, this is where that cave is located. You can see it on the map here. It's pretty clear once you see it there, right? Uh, down here, we have a cool little uh, hot springs area. This is one of my favorite areas in the entire map. Uh, and this has puddle slimes. Let me drop an oka real quick so I can pick up a puddle slime. Okay, puddle slimes are very unique and uh, we'll get some of our own in the future. But basically the way that these puddle slimes work is they uh, eat water. So you have to make a pond and that pond will be what they will feed on and that'll give them water. Uh, it's pretty neat. Now, let's go ahead and get our butts out of here before things get too dicey. Uh, and that's going to be the end of this first episode. I was hoping that we would get to see some rad slimes, but we'll see them next time. They sometimes appear out here uh, towards the evening. Um, but anyway, let's head on home and uh, let's just end this episode. So ultimately what I would like to say is uh, thank you all so much for watching. I hope that for those of you who are new at Slime Rancher that this video reaches you and that it helps you out. Please be sure to leave any questions whatsoever that you have about Slime Rancher down below. If we can answer them, we will. Uh, a lot of people in the comments will probably answer uh, for me and I appreciate it if y'all do go ahead you know if you know the stuff about Slime Rancher feel free to help answer those questions I myself will do my best to either answer those comments uh, down below or uh, answer them in a future video uh, maybe we'll spend some special time going and focusing on a particular thing that one of y'all has a question about because it's something that maybe we're interested in or maybe we want to do a little experiment I want this series to be about helping all of us better understand Slime Rancher and especially for those of y'all who are new to the game and are trying to get your feed into it. A lot of us have been playing this for a long time, so a lot of us take a lot of things for granted. So hopefully, uh, y'all can help me have a better understanding of what it is that y'all are looking for. And then who knows, maybe in the future I can make a more specific, tightly edited, animated, awesome version of a tutorial for this game, because y'all know me. I love me some Slime Rancher. So, with that, let's go ahead and sell these last plorts. Let's go ahead and do one last feeding of our uh, jelly rolls over here, and we will say goodbye. So, oh, well, these aren't ready to, uh, they aren't ready to pick up. So, can we afford the sprinkler? We can't afford the sprinkler, but we can afford the nutrient soil. So let's spend some money on that. Perfect. So now we've upgraded this to nutrient soil. We guarantee we're going to get a full harvest every time. That's going to help us out. But we can feed these guys some carrots, because we got plenty of carrots. There you go, y'all. All right, y'all. Well, with all that, thank you all so much for watching. If you liked what you saw, please be sure to give this video a like, a favorite, and subscribe to the channel. Like I said, leave your comments down below, your questions down below, and I will do my best to answer all of your questions. And with that, my name has been Price, and I will see y'all next time. Let's sell some plots. Let's sell some plots. All right, y'all. See you next time.